Hi everyone, welcome to Handmade Beauty Box Live. I'm Anne Marie and I am so glad that you are watching this month because this month your Handmade Beauty Box came and I bet you were pretty excited by all the ingredients that you got in it, right? And have you ever made a lotion bar before? What is a lotion bar? Let's talk about that. So this month's Handmade Beauty Box project makes lotion bars. And lotion bars are a solid mixture of waxes and oils that you apply to your skin like this to provide a beautiful moisturizing barrier and also skin nourishing, skin loving oils and waxes. They're especially good on wind chapped skin. So think about uh, outdoor activities, right? So many of us do fun things like paddle boarding or skiing in the winter, or we are on a lake and we're water skiing. Well, you know what? That skin needs a lot of extra protection. So that's what this month's Handmade Beauty Box does is protect your skin in a safe and super portable manner. Like these little guys are so perfect for just dropping into a purse and grabbing and going. So in this month's Handmade Beauty Box, you received eight ounces of EcoSoya Advanced Wax. And what is this? This is a hardening agent, first and foremost, right? You can see it's solid at room temperature. And it also acts as a protective barrier for your skin because it lays down a really nourishing coating of wax to help protect your skin from losing moisture, but also from things like the elements, like wind. You got eight ounces of the advanced soy wax. And this soy wax, if you're thinking, well, soy wax, my goodness, could that be something that you use in candles? Is that skin safe? This soy wax is totally skin safe. Next, you got five ounces of shea butter. And everybody, I think, knows a lot about shea butter. It's a beautiful butter that is so moisturizing. It has vitamins A, E, and F, and it also melts on contact with the skin. And it is creamy, it's luxurious, and it is so wonderful for healing and repairing some damaged skin. Like say you, again, you went out, you really went hard outside, and you've got some chapped skin, Shea butter is great for that. You also receive five ounces of avocado oil. Avocado oil is liquid at room temperature. It's got vitamins B1, B2, and vitamins A. And vitamin A is particularly good at skin and cell regeneration when you, when you look at the different studies that have been done on it. In your kit, you also received energy fragrance oil, which has notes of grapefruit, it has notes of lemon, it has notes of lime cucumber and jasmine and um, Handmade Beauty Box's parent company Brambleberry.com has been selling energy for over 15 years. I created the fragrance 15 years ago and have been selling it ever since then and love the scent. It is a timeless classic. You also received Red Blue Mica. And this color is actually 100% all natural. So it's got carmine, carmine, titanium dioxide and mica in it. Finally, adorable labels. So you got all these great labels and you can use them to cut out and then label your lotion bars. And so we have them for the large size and for the small size. I love the bright and cheery colors. And then finally in your kit you received your instructions for how to make your lotion bar. So this takes just about mm, about 15 minutes and that a lot of that time is literally just setting up the project. So with that, Courtney, have been there any questions that have come in anywhere? Not yet. Not yet, okay, perfect. So we do have people monitoring our Facebook Live and of course Snapchat and StreamSend. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask away because I would love to answer them for you live on air. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to be using a clean, a clean heat safe container. In this case, I've gone ahead and made sure that it was clean by spraying it out with rubbing alcohol, but you can do a 5% bleach water solution if you're doing this at home and you don't happen to have rubbing alcohol. And I'm pouring all my eight ounces of my EcoSoya Advanced Soy Wax in there, and I see a little bit just sticking to the bottom. There we go. So all of my eight ounces of soy wax is in, and then adding all of my avocado oil. And again, this is five ounces of avocado oil. And 
my hands are so slippery, it's not opening. So I'm going to move, oh, there we go. So five ounces of avocado oil. And again, avocado oil just acts as such a wonderful conditioning agent in your skincare products and has a really nice long shelf life. That's one thing you always have to be thinking about when you're formulating products is how long is this going to last? And so the avocado oil is particularly good at that. Then we're going to do our five ounces of shea butter. Now we're gonna melt this in the microwave for just about two minutes. And when we melt that in the microwave for just about two minutes, we're gonna be doing 30 second bursts. And the reason we're doing 30 second bursts is because we just never want those oils to get too hot. One of the things with shea butter that you always have to keep in mind is that every so often with shea butter, it's like a regular butter, and when you heat it too quickly, say in the microwave, it doesn't go back together, meaning the particles break apart and they don't ever realign. So one of the keys to taking care of that is to melt your shea butter very gently, which is what we're doing when we're doing the nice 30 second stir, 30 second stir. Courtney, I saw you raise your hand. Did you have a question? Can you use beeswax instead of soy wax? Oh, that is a great question. Can you use beeswax instead of soy wax? Absolutely, you can use beeswax instead of soy wax, but let's talk about that substitution. Beeswax very, very, very hard. Also has a very high melt point. Soy wax has a much lower melt point and is much more soft. So I'm just checking this. What I notice is that really I'm not getting a lot of melt yet, so I'm gonna put this back in for 30 seconds. So soy wax has a, is much softer and has a lower melt point. And so because of that, if you substitute as beeswax for the soy wax, the beeswax would create a harder final product. Also, do note it wouldn't be vegan at that point. So you want to decrease the amount of beeswax in this recipe to make up for the fact that it's much harder than the soy wax. So you would do about six ounces of beeswax instead of the full eight ounces. Also remember when you're formulating with beeswax is that it has a really beautiful kind of, well, honey smell, of course. And so that might affect the final smell of your product. So you can see we're getting a lot, a lot more melting here, and I'm just gonna give it a quick stir to make sure everything's getting melted evenly. Because remember, when you are melting your products in the microwave, it actually heats from a core on the inside and radiates out. And so I am gonna put this in for another 30 seconds. And for someone that asked earlier if they needed to use a microwave and if they could just use a stove top, absolutely, you totally can use a stove top. But I want you to be really mindful of the fact that you're heating hot oils on a stove. So I would actually recommend using a double boiler or using a heat diffuser so that you make sure that the temperature of your oils and waxes isn't getting too warm. It really pays to be safe. So if you're crafting with uh, over a stove top, make sure you also have a fire extinguisher nearby because, well, accidents happen, especially cooking accidents with oils. So now you can see where we're at here and we're just at about a minute and a half. So I'm just gonna give this another 30 seconds to make sure that all of my chunks are fully melted. And then once that's done, we'll be ready to fragrance, we'll be ready to pour and color. Yes, Courtney. We have a question on Ustream about grainy lotion bars. A uh, question on Ustream about grainy lotion bars. This is a really common thing. So do you remember when I was talking about the shea butter and how when you melt it gently, it really melts down in a gentle and even fashion and doesn't completely collapse and turn into a lot of different kinds of fatty oil and fatty acid chains? Well, if you get graininess, it is usually because your butters have tried to reorient them, their cell structure and haven't been able to. Meaning, shea butter is comprised of a lot of different types of fatty acids. Some of those are solid at room temperature, some of them are liquid at room temperature. But when it's in its shea butter state, it's homogenized, meaning they're all well mixed in, just like regular table butter. When you melt those down too violently, all the bonds break apart and they're difficult to get back together. And when that happens, you get graininess. And what that is, is it's really the steric acid of the butter coming out and not finding anything to mix with anymore. The ways to get rid of that 
are to either temper your butter, which is basically heating your butter very slowly, or to melt the butter down gently. And so sometimes that means um, heating everything up and then adding your butters at the very end. It could be heating on 30 second bursts and stirring. Whatever it is, just make sure that you are heating your butters up very gently and slowly. And that will really help a lot with graininess. Now that this is fully melted, go ahead and add your fragrance oil. And remember, we're not trying to make a perfume. We're trying to make basically a solid lotion. So as really yummy as this smells, just go ahead and do eight milliliters of the energy fragrance oil, which is just about two and a half of these dropper fulls. Because again, we don't want to overpower anybody that's wearing this, especially when you consider that you might be layering other products on top of this or putting on some sort of perfume. So we want a gentle smell that you can smell when you put it on, but not everybody in the next room can smell. Once this is done, you could either stop right now and pour into your containers and you would have an uncolored single lotion bar that didn't have any color, just had the scent. What we're gonna do is make a double pour lotion bar, which are really fun, and they're, they just add a little bit of interest to our clear containers. You can see this one I did in pink, and I'm gonna show you how to do the double pour now. So, we take our two containers, and again, I went ahead and made sure these containers were totally cleaned out earlier with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, but you can do a 5% bleach water solution as well. Just split this up into two containers and you'll notice that you'll see a little bit of hardening coming up. Um, is there a frozen spoon anywhere around, Courtney, so I could check to see how I'm liking my formulation? One of the things that I really like to do to save myself any sort of heartache whenever I'm formulating a new lotion bar recipe is I like to test out the recipe before I pour everything into the containers. So obviously I've tested this recipe for you. It's gonna turn out perfect each and every time because I've made it a lot and I've tested it. That's one of the really great things about ordering from Handmade Beauty Box and getting your monthly DIY subscription is that they're fully tested projects. But say you wanted to customize this a little bit. You wanted to try that beeswax. You wanted to go with olive oil. The way you test out your recipe before you pour it all into containers is you take a spoon that you've put in the freezer and you just pull it out and the bomb hardens instantly. So that way you can test to make sure that you're really happy with the consistency. And I love this consistency. I find it spreadable and soft, yet not too oily, which is really nice. So frozen spoon, just dip it in here and that way you can test your bomb. So that's a really great way that you can test your products without having to pour it all and wait for it to harden. Another thing is if you're in a warmer climate right now, you might find that your bombs take just a little bit longer to harden than what we have in other areas that are cooler. So if that's the case, just give it an extra, uh, extra few hours in a cooler area. You can always stick your bombs in the refrigerator or the freezer if you want them to cool extra fast. So now, yes, Courtney? I think that's a good segue into this question. How do you make the lotion bar either harder or softer? How do you make the lotion bar harder or softer? That is a great question because reasons for making a harder lotion bar would definitely be if you were selling or giving away the product in a very warm environment. Say your business is only in Hawaii, for example. You're going to want a bar that doesn't melt when it gets in people's pockets, for example. And so you would want a harder bar. So the way that you get a harder bar is that you either use a harder combination of waxes. So you could use that beeswax, or you increase the amount of soy wax you use, or the butters, or you decrease the liquids. So basically you're trying to change your ratios from being about 25% wax, 25% liquids, and 50% butters. You're trying to change your ratios to make sure you have harder ingredients in there to make them harder. If you want a softer product, you do the exact same thing. You add more liquid oils. You decrease your solid waxes. Um, the, in this case, the shea butter doesn't really change the properties 
of your product from harder to softer. So you'd really be working with your waxes and you'd really be working with your liquid oils. So when you're playing around, change at 10% at a time. So don't decide that like, for example, this recipe is eight ounces of soy wax, five ounces of avocado oil, and five ounces of shea butter. If I was gonna try and make it more liquid, like softer, I would probably just add an extra 20% of the avocado oil and bring that up to six ounces instead of five ounces of avocado. Tiny changes, not huge changes, because you don't want to end up with a soupy, gloppy mess or something that hardens up so quickly. Again, using that frozen spoon trick is really going to help you when you're thinking about formulating. So I've added three mini scoops of the red blue mica to this one container. I've stirred it in fully, and now I'm going to show you how to do the double pour. All you do is you take your container and make sure it's stable, and then you pour both sides at once, and that's it. That is your double pour. And if you let this sit, what you'll notice is that there's a little bit of pink and a little bit of white. And I'm gonna move this so you're not gonna be able to see it perfectly, but I can see the pinks in the kind of clears swirling around, which is really nice. And if you saw on the instructions that we sent, we had a double pour on there so you could see exactly what a double pour looks like. Also, you can see right here, we have stripes. So if you wanted to do stripes, all you'd have to do is pour one layer, wait till it hardened, pour another layer, wait until it hardened. Um, it, there's really a lot of different fun options to do with these lotion bars. So then when you're getting ready to use them, they're pretty easy to use. All you need to do is let these harden up and then you twist up and you make sure that it's up a little bit and then you just apply to your skin. So this lotion bar is really nourishing, very moisturizing, and because it's oils and waxes, it lays down a great barrier. And so I like to, for example, if I'm ever gonna put on self-tanner, I like to put it around my elbows, I like to put it around my ankles and my knees to make sure that the self-tanner doesn't get into those kind of those areas because as we all know, if you've ever tried self-tanner, it definitely ends up um, getting everywhere. So that's how you use that. And then once these are solid, all you're going to want to do is take your labels and you're going to want to put them on your product. So I love these little guys, this little adorable energy lotion bar label. You'll notice that it does have the ingredients on there for you in case anybody wants to, wants to use wants to know what the ingredients are. And again, this is exactly how they come. So once this is hardened, just label it and you are ready to give them away. And if you ever wanted to turn this into a business and sell it, these are pretty close to what you'd need, but you'd want an extra label that had the net weight ounces and how to contact you, of course. Um, and those would be the things you'd need in order to sell this. So Courtney, are there any other questions? One more question about cleaning up. Oh <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So how to clean this up, right? We just made what is an amazing skin protectant, but what that means is it also is a little bit, well, sticky and doesn't necessarily clean up as easily as we may want. So there's a couple ways to clean it up. I like to take, once this is done, what I'll do is I'll just take a clean paper towel, I'll wipe it out as best as I can, and then I will get the hottest water I can with some Dawn dishwashing detergent. That's right, regular old Dawn is fantastic at grease fighting. So Dawn dishwashing detergent, hot water, a little bit of elbow grease, it's totally gone, totally done, and pretty easy to do. Again, I like to just wipe it out really quickly though with a paper towel before I do that. And use Dawn, use a real dishwashing detergent, not like a beautiful, gentle, Castile skin loving detergent for uh, skin loving soap, because you really need that scrubbiness, that, that kind of bubble busting power that those commercial, those commercial soaps really have. So that's how I do the cleanup, and that's how I'll do the cleanup as soon as we are off camera actually. Any other questions? Okay guys, well, thank you so much for watching. And if you are watching and you're not a current subscriber, here is a discount coupon code for anybody that's watching that would like to try getting a Handmade Beauty Box sent to them every single month with all the ingredients you need to make all of these awesome do-it-yourself skincare and bath and body products at home. 
Every single month you get every single thing you need to make a complete project. No running out to the store, no worrying about having to research the ingredients yourselves. So this is 15% off subscriptions and single boxes. So if you really like the solid sugar scrub box, uh, bars we made last month, for example, for a limited time, they're available in the singles area right now at the website. So you can go to handmadebeautybox.com, use this code to save 15% off a single subscription, meaning you're only getting one box or an actual subscription where you get surprised by me every single month. You guys, I would love to see what you make. So make sure that you're posting the photos to our Facebook page. When you're putting them on Instagram and on Twitter, you're hashtagging them HBB Show and Tell. So I make sure to be able to see them and see your creations because nothing makes me happier than seeing your successful projects. So until next time, you guys, happy crafting.